Good morning, everybody. Okay, so what we're going to look today is we're going to look at standard parts and what they do for advanced deal. So first thing to understand is there is a folder in your program data area that allows for you to um, store standard parts. So under program data, Autodesk, Advanced Deal 2021, um, AUS, shared standard template, standard part template, right? In here, there is a folder where I've actually put a, a sample file. Now, the purpose of this is when you go to your numbering, um, there is a standard template part tab as part of the numbering dialog box. And the idea here is that during the equal part detection process of your model, it will consider any one of these DWGs for either single part numbering or assembly part numbering, right? So if I bring that um, folder back again here, you can see that the drawings that are listed here are the ones that are listed here. And you can add as many as you like, all right? So let's, let's have a look at this example. So if I come into my sample file here, you can see I've got a bunch of shear plates modeled here. And I've modeled these using the automation with my database. And I've done this on purpose. And what I've actually done is I've numbered these things using a standard numbering range. And the idea is that these shear plates I model thousand times over in every project. And technically, these objects um, don't need detailing again and again and again. Makes absolutely no sense. So what we want to do is what we, we want to make sure that we get a standard part number for these so that we don't have to detail them. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So we've just explained what a standard part is. And as, as we mentioned, the standard parts themselves, they've got their own standard range of numbers. So in my actual model of where I'm working, I want to be able to number my parts by drawing number. But at the same token, any objects that are standard, I don't want to re-detail them again and again. So those standard components, shear plates, stiffness, base plates, these things don't change. We detail them again and again. So this is a way to do less drawings, but still have the, the standard information in your model. So let's have a look at this. So if we bring up the numbering dialog box, firstly, we need to set our settings according to how we want to number things. So I'm actually going to want to do my numbering with drawing numbers. So I actually want to produce drawings that the drawing uh, that the, the drawing number is the part mark. So I'll set this accordingly. And this will allow me to place temporary numbers into my objects before detailing so that once we detail them, the drawing number becomes the part number. At the same token, though, I want to tell the numbering saying, hey, any object you find in this model, compare it against, in this case, this file for single parts, right? So you could have standard single parts, standard assemblies, whatever it is that you like. Now, when we go and apply and do that numbering, and the numbering's finished, let's go and up the model browser. You can see um, from a single part perspective, I have my internal part marks, which is obviously my temporary placeholders for my objects, but I also have the standard part numbers. So these items don't need detailing. So obviously I can hide those, isolate or show all and do the opposite and isolate the other way, whatever it is that you prefer. And now I can then run the drawings on these guys, right? So for example, come in here and say, I want to produce part drawings of all this, single part drawings, start my single part drawings at a thousand, hit OK. The system now goes and creates those drawings. And when I finished, let's give it a second to finish. Here we go, save. We come back into our model browser. We can see now those single parts have their number, but our standard parts still have our standard number, meaning that 
that's two separate drawings that I've skipped that I don't need to detail now. Now, the, the only caveat to this is obviously back in this model, we need to detail those. And the idea is I would actually detail all my shear plates on one A2, A3, A1, whatever, create a PDF of that. And each time I do a project, I would just attach those PDFs as part of the deliverable for this project so that when my fabricator comes along and sees these standard part numbers, he knows exactly what it is to refer to. Awesome. Anyway, have a good day.